Hello everyone, here's a demo of Kerberos Authentication. Now it's called Kerberos uh, because there are three parties involved. The client that needs a service, maybe it needs to connect to a file server. The server providing the service, which in this case I'll use a file server. And the key distribution center. Now the key distribution center normally has two parts, an authentication server, with everyone's usernames and passwords, and a ticket granting server, which has got uh, tickets for all the services. This particular client, somebody has logged on using the name Shah and the password M4CFAN. The client will then be able to generate a client secret key from this username password combination. When the client wants to use the file server, it sends a simple text message, a clear text message, to the authentication server. So this message just says, user Shah wants to use the file server. The authentication server then checks to see if user Shah is in its database. And if it is in its database, then it can generate a client secret key based on the user Shah's username and password. The authentication server then sends back two messages to the client. Message A contains a client TGS session key. This will be used between the client and the ticket granting server. And this is encrypted with the client secret key. Message B is the ticket granting ticket. It includes the client ID, the client's network address, ticket validity period, and the client TGS session key which has been encrypted with the ticket granting server's secret key. So only the ticket granting server can decrypt it. So when the client gets these two messages, it can decode message A and it obtains the client TGS session key. However, it can't decode message B because it doesn't have the TGS secret key. Client sends two messages to the ticket granting server. Message C is the ticket granting ticket that it received from the authentication server earlier. And this is, remember, this is encrypted with the TGS secret key, as well as the ID of the service that it wants, which in this case is the file service ID. It also sends message D, which is an authenticator composed of the client ID and a timestamp. And this is encrypted with the client TGS session key from A. The TGS decrypts message C and gets the ticket granting ticket, which includes the client ID, client network address, ticket validity period, and client TGS session key. Now both the client and the TGS can talk to each other because both have the client TGS session key. The client uses the client TGS session key to decrypt message D. So it gets the client ID and a timestamp. So it knows when client uh, the client sent this message. The TGS can check, is the client from message C match the client from message D? And has it been the ticket validity period since it received a timestamp? If the ticket validity period is 5 minutes, it can check, oh, the timestamp is this time, has it been this time plus 5 minutes? If client ID from C matches client ID from D and it has not expired, the ticket granting server sends the following two messages back to the client. A client to service ticket, which in this case is the file server, which contains the client ID, network address, validity period, and the client server session key and only the file server can decrypt this. Message F contains the client server session key and this is encrypted with the client TGS session key received earlier. Client decodes message F using the client TGS session key and it gets the client server session key. Client sends the following two messages to the file server. 
Message E is the one that they got from the TGS earlier. Remember, this contains the client ID, the network address, the validity period, and the client server session key, and only the file server can decrypt it. He also sends message G, which is an authenticator composed of client ID and a timestamp, and this is encrypted with the client server session key. The file server obtains the client server session key when it decrypts message E. In addition to that, it gets the client ID, network address, and validity period. Since the file server has received the client server session key from the client, the file server can decrypt message D, message G, sorry, and gets the client ID and the timestamp. So now the file server has a client ID from message E and the client ID from message G, and these two client IDs must match. You can also check to see uh, whether the validity period is still there. I mean, is it still valid? Has it expired? If it hasn't expired and the clients match, the server will send the following message to the client to confirm his true identity. Yes, indeed, I'm a file server and I'm ready to serve you. So the message that the file server sends to the client has the timestamp that it got earlier plus one and it's encrypted with the client server session key. The client knows that any message from the file server has to be timestamp plus one. So if it's timestamp plus one and it's encrypted with the client server session key, then the client uh, will then trust the file server. Once the client trusts the file server, the client can issue service request to the file server and the file server can then service the request. So if you have any questions, you can email me at shah, S -H -A -H, at opensos.net. Thank you.